Hey everybody, I'm driving to meet with a client in another part of town, so I thought I'd jump on and do a quick video while I'm driving and talk about a really important point. Um, I titled the video, How to Stop, the best way to stop temper tantrums in children. But really this could apply to a lot more than just a temper tantrum. But I know that that's a point that a lot of parents will relate to as well. Um, but just if you kind of look at what I'm saying, you can maybe be able to see how this could apply to other points as well. The, in, in all complete honesty, the best way to prevent temper tantrums in children is to firstly stop them within yourself. Um, and you probably don't want to hear that, but the reality is everything that your child is doing and going through is a equal in one, 100% reflection of what's going on within you when you were a child, when your parents were children, and so forth. Uh, and same thing for your spouse. So part of the challenge of being a parent when your child starts to exhibit behaviors that you don't like is being self-honest and realizing that they have those behaviors because of you. They inherited them from you. And you might say, well, you know, I never act like that in front of my children. It doesn't matter whether you act like that or not because they're not necessarily getting it from watching you. They're getting it from you in, in, in other ways. And this is why if you watch my videos, I'm always talking about uh, the destiny process and studying it studying destiny, studying the information that's presented there. Because if you don't, you're not going to really understand how things work in reality. You're not really going to understand how children develop because ch like child development is not like some separate branch of knowledge. It's the fundamental way in which all of us become who we are. So it's one of the most fundamental things about reality is child development. It's, it's, it determines who we as adult, who we become as adults and therefore what we do with our lives and therefore how we shape and participate in this world and leave things for generations to come. I mean, it, it's everything. It's the most important thing to consider is how a child is supported in their developmental phase. And the truth is it, happens, it starts before they're conceived because whether you realize it or not, and is the thing, you can either take my word for this or... What I would suggest is that you really study these things because that's how I understand it through studying and through self-reflection and through observation of myself and through testing the points and changing myself and seeing that, hey, when I apply this knowledge and I apply it, when I actually apply it, it makes a difference. Um, the, one of the big mistakes, though, as a potential pitfall is that you just study something and don't, don't apply it. And when I say apply it, I mean you actually have to change yourself and your behavior and do things differently than what you've done in the past. So that's like the primary starting point as a parent is you have to first look at yourself because if you're trying to change your child's behavior but you haven't changed yourself, the, the child won't necessarily consciously right away see it, but what they will eventually realize, even if it's at a subconscious level, is that they got everything from you because eventually as they get older and as they start to see and understand more, they will realize that, at, again, at, maybe even at a subconscious level, that they're just a copy of you. So they're going to lose respect for you. They're going to end up hating you be, for the parts of themselves that they don't like. And the reality is they inherited everything from you, whether it was from you directly from something that you participated in in your own life or something that your parents participated in that you inherited that you just didn't sort out within yourself and then you passed it on to your child or they learned it from the environment that you have allowed them to be in tv peer groups school you name it so at, at every level you are 100 percent responsible for who your child becomes even when they're two years old and it's like when i look at it for myself when i see other parents talking about it they act like a two-year-old has their own like it's like they're totally self-aware or something so they understand everything that's going on within them but the reality is you're not even totally self-aware so why would you expect your two-year-old to be they are perhaps more aware of things from a certain perspective but they're also not 
okay? So you can't use the idea of, oh, children are just like these amazing creative creatures who know everything and, you know, therefore, and we, and we destroy that. Yes, to a certain degree that is true, but the reality is, what do you expect to happen if, if they're in an environment where everyone around them is less than who they really could be? And they essentially have to behave a certain way in order to survive in the context of that environment. What are they supposed to do? Not conform? I mean, you're not setting a very good example if you've conformed, right? So again, it always comes back down to who you are. You can't control another person's behavior. All you can really do is support them to realize who they really are and who they could be if they choose and decide. So you may, you may say to yourself, okay, well, well, how the fuck does that apply to a two-year-old? How am I supposed to apply that to a two-year-old? My child's misbehaving, they're doing X, Y, and Z, and it's just getting crazy, and I can't control it, and it's really upsetting me, and I'm losing sleep, and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> there's, no, there's no just magic, quick, easy fix. Could you take them to a doctor and put them on Ritalin? Or Adderall? Absolutely, you could do that. Would I suggest that? I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it for my own child. Okay, I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you whether you should do that or not. But if it was me and my child, I wouldn't do that because I understand that my child is a reflection of me. So if my child's exhibiting is exhibiting behavior, then I first have to look at that within myself and say, is this something that's pissing me off? Is this something that? you know, is, is causing me to react. And therefore, perhaps my child is showing me something that I haven't taken responsibility for. And instead of being upset with your child or mad or angry, perhaps you should be grateful. Um, doesn't mean you're gonna just not do anything and let the behavior pattern continue. But the point is, the first point would be, just take a step back, take a deep breath, and realize your child is reflecting something, okay? They're not doing it necessarily consciously, that's not what I'm saying but they are reflecting something that you need to look at, okay? And firstly address within yourself. So how do you do that? Well, from, from my experience, okay? I'll give you an example. Um, take a child where they really want something. Like, um, okay, like Max really likes balloons. Okay, so let's take that for, an exa for example. And let's say they just really want these balloons. And you're saying to them, um, you know, well, you know, we're not gonna get any balloons today, we'll get them tomorrow. Or, you know, they bought them some balloons and they're saying, you know, I want the balloons. And you're like, well, okay, you can have some balloons. And then they start throwing them all around the room and they're like, I want more balloons, I want more balloons. And you say, well, we don't have any more balloons. Or, you know, I have a big box of balloons, but I don't want you to throw them all over the place. And the child's like, I just want the balloons. I just want the balloons. And then they start crying. And then you're like, no, you can't have the balloons. Stop crying. Why are you crying, right? I mean, can you, can you imagine this scenario? I think anybody who's a parent or has been a child can relate to that because we all behave like this from time to time. Um, and even as adults, you probably behave like this in certain ways, right? So you have to find that point within yourself. And for example, what I would say to Max, and these are things I have said to him, because even he has to walk through certain points. Like there's points that um, I did not completely direct within myself. And there's still points I haven't completely directed within myself. That's part, that's why it's a process to continue uncovering these points and directing them. Forgive yourself understand the pattern and then release it and then change it actually act differently in your life um so there are still things that i know i have not directed yet but even when max was born or conceived there was points i hadn't directed yet and so i realized in self-honesty that there are things that behavioral patterns that i would have transferred to him because again when you study the destiny material what you'll realize is that your mind, everything within your mind, which is information, which is your beliefs, your feelings, your thoughts, all of your reactions, all of your memories, um, even within one memory, you, like, let's just take an example. You have a memory of being in a situation where you reacted to something. Your body stores that information of how you reacted and it creates like a character around it. And then that in certain moments that are similar, like your, your body's always, your, well, it's not really, it's your body, but it's also at the direction of your mind. It's always scanning your environment, looking for, and, and at all times it's scanning your environment 
and then checking against the database of information within you. Have I ever been in a situation like this before? Does this, is this anything like anything I've ever seen or done or experienced before? Or, and if no, is it anything like my parents ever experienced? Because all that information is within you. And if there's a no, then it's like, is there anything in any of my past lives in my entire existence that's ever been like this? And if the, you know, and so you're constantly, you're checking this database and as soon as you find a match, bam, the character activates and you start acting like that. Okay, so I'm giving you the thumbnail sketch, but of course, if you really wanna understand this, that's why you wanna read Heaven's Journey to Life, which I've been talking about. And you can just go to heavensjourneytolife.blogspot.com. There's links on my Facebook page if you scroll through. But the reason I'm explaining is just so you have the background to understand what I understand now, which is when your child is behaving in a certain way, what they're doing is accessing a, a character as a behavioral pattern, as a reaction to an experience that is like a memory within themselves or in you. So it, going back to like the balloons, for example, the child is looking at the balloons and in their mind, there's this idea that if I, if I could have these balloons, if I could play with them and I had just more and more coming to me all the time, and I, if I could just get more balloons right now, then I'm gonna experience this amazing feeling of joy. Because the very first time I played with a balloon, it was just so amazing. And everybody around me was like, look, a balloon, wow, look at this balloon. Isn't it great, look, a balloon. And you're like, oh my God, this is fucking amazing. Balloons are fucking awesome. And so you store that memory. And it's like attached with this emotion and this energy of, this is, this is amazing. So now within you, any chance you get where like there's a possibility of, of playing with a balloon, you're, that character activates because that character is like this, uh, it's like a entity in itself within you that needs to be fueled with energy to continue existing. And it's like a computer program. It looks like in the matrix, like the machines, like they don't, they don't have their own life. They can't power themselves. So they need to suck energy out of the, out of the physical bodies of human beings. Well, that's what these character entities are doing within you in your body. I mean, they're just constructs of information. They're not like an alien inside of you. It's just information that you've stored, but that needs you to activate and give energy to for it to continue existing. And so as soon as you're, as soon as you find something like, for example, the balloon, where it's like, oh, there's a balloon in the, in the vicinity. I need to have that balloon. I need to have more balloons because if I get more balloons, then I'm gonna feel amazing and I need to feel amazing. And really all that's gonna happen is that energy is gonna be fed into your body, into your mind and activate and supply all those characters within you with energy so they can continue existing and growing and multiplying. Meanwhile, where is that energy coming from? It's not coming from the balloon. It's coming from your physical body. It's literally draining your physical body of energy. So as a parent, if you allow this within your child, I mean, you're really fucking them over. But the, the, again, the point is you have to consider that they're perhaps in that moment accessing a memory that they downloaded from you, whether observing you, whether following your example, or whether just from your actual mind that when you had sex with your spouse and conceived the child, in that moment of conception, your mind and their mind, which was merged within sex, downloaded into your partner, if your partner is the female, uh, if you are the female, then it's just already in there because all that information is in every cell of your body. And so it merges, all that information is downloaded into the physical cell that is your child at conception. And then they start to develop and manifest as a physical body with a mind, just like you have. Because, and if you didn't have that mind, they wouldn't have had it. So everything that then unfolds from there is just your child living out the mind that you have allowed to be downloaded into them. I mean, it's really fucked. And I know as a parent, it's probably like, either you probably think what I'm saying is crazy, which is, that's fine. I mean, you can think it's crazy, but the truth is you're the one with the problem if you're listening to this, if you have kids that are throwing temper tantrums. So you can either listen to me and hear me out, or you can react and say it's crazy. But I guarantee you that my relationship with my child is more effective than yours with your child. I'm not saying it's perfect, it's not, but I guarantee you it's a lot more effective. Just watch my videos, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so I'm saying that that may be a reason why you might want to listen to me. I'm not saying that you need to follow every exact thing I'm saying, but consider what I'm saying and, and, and look at it and say, okay, maybe Cameron 
is has something and understands something that's that's supportive. So maybe I need to investigate that for myself. So I'm not looking for you to follow me or listen to me or learn from me. I'm giving you the the way the, where to go and, and study for yourself. This is not coming from me. It's just something I'm learning and applying. It's like it's like if I was if I was teaching you calculus. Ultimately, what I would want to do is say, look, here's the book. Study it for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like you, I wouldn't want to sit there and have to teach you the whole thing because that wouldn't make sense. If you learn it for yourself, that's better. You can then apply it. And no, no one person's going to have the time to sit there and teach you everything. You have to take it on for yourself. And the reality is, you know, you might be asking yourself, like, why is any of that necessary? That seems like a lot of work. Well, did you learn how to be an effective parent? No, you didn't. You didn't go to school for it. You went to school for at least probably 12 years, I would assume, or more, and yet you didn't learn anything about how reality actually functions. You just learned a bunch of information in books that is just memorization of basically stories that they that the school wanted you to memorize, which have no real value except to keep you not questioning the system that exists. And so if you really want to learn how reality works, you're going to have to really study something that's telling you how reality works, and that's why I'm suggesting you study Destiny, because that's what it is. So going back to the point, when you have a child, you know, who's in that situation where they're already, they're already in that state where they're like crying and begging and all that stuff, they promise they've already activated that character. They've already activated it. So what I've found in my experience, the best thing you can do is simply just breathe and just let go of everything in that moment. Anything that you're holding on to of like, this is not good or this is bad or or, or whatever it is, like, I need to change this situation right now, it's not life or death. If it's a life or death situation, then just do what you need to do physically, practically to remove you and the child out of that situation. If they're holding a knife and they're swinging it around and it's clearly dangerous, just take the knife out of their hand, okay? But that would be something you wanna prevent. So again, going back to the original point, this all can be prevented, especially if you're someone who doesn't have children right now. You can prevent this. If you already have parents, or if you already have children, rather, you can prevent it to a certain degree by starting to work on yourself, but then you can also support yourself and your child in those moments. So when you're already in that moment and the child's already upset, what I've found to be most effective is to simply breathe as the parent and then suggest for your child to breathe as well. And, you know, they may react to that in, at the beginning, but I'm telling you, I have a two and a half year old, Katie and I have a two and a half year old where when we, when we breathe and we slow down and we say to Max, Max, let's just breathe. You know what Max does? He stops. And he starts breathing like that. And then we just breathe. And then sometimes he'll start to get, go back into it, start justifying and saying, but, but, I, but I really just want whatever it is. And I say, I understand, Max. I really understand. However, let's just breathe. We're just going to breathe. And then we just breathe again. Right? Because eventually if you breathe long enough, it'll go. Now that's not the permanent solution in itself because you're still going to have to work through whatever memories and things that are stored in your body, which is causing those reactions to come up. But at a, at a as a baseline point, you have to breathe and let the energy go. And you can't make your child do that. All you can do is do it as a parent. But then at the very least, you're not going to be reacting to them and compounding the situation and making it worse. So that would be that would be a primary point. Um, you know, there's a lot more I could say that probably is not going to be very supportive in the moment. Just from me talking about it, it might be more. It might be well. It would be more effective for you to sort of discover some of this on your own by studying. So from that perspective, what I would really suggest is breathe. Okay, don't try to fix the situation in the moment just in, or in other words right away like just breathe and then see how it unfolds from there and and talk to your child as an equal talk to them as if they're yourself but you can't do that if you don't have that self-awareness within yourself that hey this is a pattern for me so like for example if it were max these are things that i've said to him like as examples like i said to him one time look max so now, now that we're breathing everything's calmed down i said to him look the way that you're behaving right now you know, is based on your feeling like an energy inside of you, right? And he's like, yes. And I said, I said that the reality is that myself and your mother, 
we both, when we were your age, experienced the same thing and we acted the same way. So I, I understand what you're going through. The reason why we're supporting you right now to breathe and slow down, and we're not just saying, yes, you can have this thing or no, you can't, but we're suggesting let's just breathe is because right now it doesn't really matter whether you get that thing or not. Because even if you get it or you don't get it, you're still here. You're still actually just here. And, and, and for example, with the balloon thing, there was a time where he was holding some balloons and he wanted more balloons and he was getting worked up because we were saying, you know, we're not gonna give you more balloons. And the only reason we were saying no was because in that moment, it was becoming a point of he was just getting really excited about it. And like, and like not excited, like even in a good way, although that would still be an issue, more like in the, from the, I mean, it could be, not necessarily an issue, but it could be, but more from the perspective of him being very upset. And, and the point is when I'm looking at that from my perspective, what I see, because how I would experience it within myself is this, this energy. And I pointed out to him, I said, you know, Max, I know within yourself, you're feeling like you need to have those balloons right now, but you're holding balloons in your hand. And so even if you get more balloons, it's not gonna change anything. And all that's gonna happen is you may just feel like you got what you wanted, right? But that's not really what's best for you because it's just fueling that experience of, of being controlled and possessed by this energy and feeling inside of you, right? And so what I, what I did in that moment is I started doing self-forgiveness out loud with Max there talking to him, but as myself, like supporting myself as a child through those points. And then Max started doing self-forgiveness. And I'm telling you, a two and a half year old can do self-forgiveness. Are they gonna understand everything in its total complete context? Perhaps not, but that's really just dependent upon you as a parent, how, how well, how good, how effective your vocabulary is and how much you support them. And if you don't have an effective vocabulary or know how to support your child, that's why you should check out TechnoTutor. Right, because that's what we're showing you is even a two and a half year old can understand things beyond what you would realize way beyond it you know and i remember max said you know i forgive myself for i forgive myself that i have accepted and allowed myself to cry right and he said and then he said after that i was crying because i just wanted the balloons and i said why why were you crying though and he said because then you would give them to me so imagine at, at two and a half years of age, being aware, being self-aware that you're crying to manipulate another person. And I said to him, I said, Max, is that crying going to get you what you want? Is that really what is gonna happen? And he said, no. And then he started laughing. So imagine going from what you might call the beginning of a temper, ten, a temper tantrum, potentially, especially if it escalates, to doing self-forgiveness with your two and a half year old and breathing together and being honest with them and explain to them, look, um, and I told him, and Katie was there. We said, we're not, we're not upset with you, Max. We're not upset. We're not judging. Um, we understand what you're going through. We've been through this ourselves as well, right? And, and partly why you're going through is because we didn't take responsibility for it. And that's why you're experiencing it. But the best thing we can do in this moment is to support you to understand what's going through, what you're going through because that energy that's building up inside of you is only gonna hurt you. It's, only, it's not best for you to participate in that, right? So we're gonna support you with that, right? And um, it's pretty cool because you wouldn't think, of course you wouldn't think that that kind of discussion or conversation is possible with a two and a half year old. But that's simply because you haven't been taught how to do it you haven't you haven't taken the time and walked through all the points necessary to be able to do it and again i'm not claiming that everything is perfect because it's not because it's not even possible for first of all for it to be perfect completely because the world and everybody is not in a state where everyone's having their basic needs met so everything is competition everything is fear right the, the most important thing though is that we do not use that as an excuse as to why we don't have to keep moving towards perfection because perfection is possible self-perfection and it's about self-trust and self-responsibility and self-honesty and self-forgiveness it's not about trying to make the world perfect it's about firstly looking at yourself and if you want to make the world better the only way we can do that is by looking at ourselves first 
because the world is a reflection of all of us. It's nothing else. And so if, if, if we try to change the world, but we don't change who we are, the world's not going to change. And if we try to change our children as parents, but we don't change who we are, it's not going to change anything. It doesn't matter what technique you use. It doesn't matter because you're not changing who you are. And so at a basic level, you have to, because I've had to do this for myself, which is why I can say this, but you have to really question like, am I okay with treating my child the way I was treated? Am I okay with just training them to survive in this world and nothing else? Am I okay with just allowing my child to, to use and see me just as a way to get something? And therefore, am I okay with treating everything in my reality, including my own physical body, as a means to just get some kind of in, self-interested desire fulfilled? Because at the end of the day, every single character that we participate in and activate that's, that's not just directly our physical body as what's best physically for everyone. Every other thing that we participate in is just...